Xbox One build, a national. I mean, I, we're going to do the intro. We, we want to do this? Yeah, are you ready? Yeah, ready. You got it. Ready? <clears throat> In this episode of The Full Nerd, Core i9 reviewed Sound Blaster 30... Oh, God. Dang it. <laughs> Sound Blaster 8E5. All right, here we go again. <clears throat> In this episode of The Full Nerd... Core i9 reviewed, Sound Blaster AE5, an Xbox One X build, and a national state of emergency for GPUs is declared news at 11. Welcome to the Full Nerd episode 24. Did I get that right? Are we on 24? You sure did. I can't even count. Yeah, today. you got it. Recorded on June no, 20th. No, 25, 25. See? Wait, what a, I'm yeah, wrong. and he I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I'm it. sorry. Yeah, I thought I saw I 24 a... up earlier. Welcome to the Full Nerd episode 25. That's for the edit, which we won't edit in. Recorded on June 20th, 2017. I'm Gordon Mung with co host Brad Charkas. Hey, y'all. Guest, uh, guest, our special guest. I don't know why I even have this. Not is there like a non-special guest? It's like not even special. She's special. Elena Yee, special guest. Elena Yee, special. And controlling the vertical and horizontals, Adam, Adam Patrick Murray. Uh, hey Gordon, did you see all the hot uh, new World of Warships uh, info <laughs> from E3 last week? Was there? I was playing last night, but yes. You, you didn't no, watch didn't. like the live stream and no, really know, was all there. The- <laughs> I would uh, have if I'd known that. No, he's, no, he's no there's you, not. Dude. Nobody's paying attention to that during E3. Come on. Oh. It's because it doesn't, they're actually doing their own show, man. <laughs> they don't need E3. Yeah. They pulled out of E3 a couple of years ago and said that exactly. Yep. Yeah, they don't, they don't, don't need, need E3, it. They, man. My God, it's a free to play model. What do they need to pay them for? Free to play. <laughs> it's for you to buy stuff. Uh, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, one, and if you're wondering, right behind Adam is uh, is our special guest, our other special guest, Martin Williams, who's going to teach us how to say aluminum. How do you say aluminum? How do you say it? Aluminium. Uh, he, I think he said aluminum. Yeah, he said <laughs> aluminum. So I will trans- Google Translate will actually say that is aluminum. Nice. Uh, but I want to get on our first topic because we got a lot of stuff to cover. Obviously, we've been talking about Core i9, it feels like, God, for months. We it's have. officially here now. And, of course, I've lost my benchmarks. I we actually have some benchmarks we're going to look Bam. at. Oh, I got it right here. Look. So Adam is actually going to flash. Let's, so basically, <clears throat> if you don't know, Core i9 benchmark reviews lifted this Monday at like 6 a.m. I've got a small subset of them, the ones that I think are important to talk about. Um, it is, of course, I only review the 10 core part. I did get the KB Lake X part very, very late in the process, but I'm not putting a $250 CPU into a $500 motherboard at this point. So I'm not, <laughs> not really sure who cares about that. But uh, can we get the first graphic up there, Adam? Uh, we sure can. Here we go. Uh, right, we, were try oh, to, we were trying to go full go. Madden, but oh, Yay. look at there. Yeah. So the first thing you are what, seeing what are we there, seeing? If, if, for audio people, we are showing you basically a, a, a results from Handbrake. And we basically take a very large 30 gig file. We encode it in Handbrake, which is multi-threaded. And right on top of all these other CPUs, we can see Vishera all the way down to the bottom of the Empire State Building down there, is that 10 core Skylake X part. And that is... For the most part, the story of Skylake X, the 10 core part, it is simply the fastest consumer CPU Intel has ever sold us. Thus, Core i9. Right? It's, it's pretty we impressive. Get, pretty impressive. Let's flip to the next chart. We're going to go on a Cinebench, revol- uh, Cinebench results. Sorry for audio listeners. But I'm looking at a score of uh, Core i9. Of course, my chart is Core i7. There's a, there's a whole backstory to that. Core i9 7900X, 2180, basically, in Cinebench. Pretty damn good. Again, this is heads heads and shoulders over the eight cores. Uh, an eight-core Broadwell E, 1554. You basically, you're getting, what, mm, maybe 25% more cores for about 30% plus more performance for that 10-core part. Of course, you're getting hyper-threading as well. But uh, audio listeners... Uh, you can't you can't see this, but the people that are looking at this slide right now, they're going, "Well, look at that Broadwell E. That Broadwell E is right there." Now that is really kind of the problem I had with my Skylake X review. 
is the 10 core Core i7 6950X part, the infamous $1,723 CPU, is right there. The whole time it's sitting right in the rear view mirror of Skylake X. And that is a little bit of a problem for Skylake X, but um, we'll get to that later. Let's flip to the next chart. Should yeah, this is, just, this is just like college. <laughs> and you know, there will be a test. There will be a test. What was the score of Cinebench in 1872? I don't know. <laughs> Again, Pauvre, this is another 3D rendering thing. Again, Skylake X, right on top. We see actually a better delta between the 10-core Skylake X and the 10-core Broadwell E, but it's not that far behind it. And both those 10 cores are sitting way, way in front of the 8-core parts. And I will say, and I just want to give the shout-out to the AMD fans there, look at where that Ryzen 7 1800X, that thing is looking pretty right there, right? 3300 mm -hmm. versus 4500, yeah, that's... Big gap, but uh, 1800X is $500, right? So that's a moral victory. Yep. So And this uh, part that we're testing is 1000 bucks, right? The, yeah, this is the, the $1,000. The 10-core yeah. part is $1,000. Uh, and uh, I'm actually, so the next one I, I picked specially because I want to point out one of the di key differences with Skylake X. We're going to go to Win. This is a WinRAR 5.40. I also did run the 5.5 beta. Didn't make any damn difference. Uh, again, I'm going to explain it for the people who can't see the chart. On top is no longer Skylake X. It is that 10-core Broadwell E part. And then second place, 8-core Broadwell E part. Finally, third place, 10-core Skylake X. And it is tracking a solid third place. Of course, you're wondering, like, what the hell? Why, if it's faster in all these 3D rendering apps, why is it slower in WinRAR? Mm -hmm. I initially thought it was because of the cache differences with... Uh, 60 with the with the Skylake X because they, they did rejigger the entire cache design of Skylake X. It is a different core, it is not Skylake K. I guess it's probably an easy way to break it down for you for a desktop. It, it's got a different cache, but I, I talked to Intel and they said, you know, actually, it turns out this is probably due to the mesh architecture of Skylake X. So, previously on Broadwell E, on Haswell, on Ivory Bridge, they use a ring architecture where they basically had a ring, if you think about it, as a, a ring connecting four cores, a ring connecting six cores, a ring connecting eight cores. You get up to like, you know, 20, what, 22 cores, 28 cores that we're starting to hit now that, you know, you can see a ring architecture is not going to work because it's a great big hoop going between, between all those CPUs. Sometimes they'll actually run multiple CPUs or multiple rings you're just going to add a lot of latency. They, Intel sees the future, says this ring thing is, ain't going to work when we start stacking all these cores on here. Let's go to a new mesh architecture. It's basically like a grid. So all the CPUs are interconnected on a grid. So, you know, it doesn't have to go all the way around and visit. These, the data doesn't have to visit all these other CPUs before it gets to the next CPU. It can go directly from, you know, core zero to core five. So this mech, mesh architecture is pretty much the future for Intel processors. Intel says, yeah, and you're seeing the result here in WinRAR where um, the performance is lower than expected, and it's the it's actually the mesh architecture. I actually saw that, and also 7-zip so, as well. Sorry, go ahead. So if they're switching from the ring bus to this mesh architecture and it results in a performance degradation, at least here, why are they doing that? Well, because um, Intel thinks that, you know, as... as uh, as they get to, you know, 28 cores, and God knows where this ends, right? People seem to want more and more, especially on servers. You get up to 40-plus cores on a, on a die. Uh, a, m multiple ring architectures just connected to each other just is, is going to put them at a penalty to AMD, which is, they use a, fa a fabric, right? And, you know, and this is actually something where people think, well, this is, this is all because of AMD. Intel did this mesh architecture because of AMD, and, and that, it is probably not There's true. There's no way. There's no way because this is this is stuff that's been in development for years and years and years. Um, they didn't just suddenly pull this out of like a you know their black bag and stick it on a CPU and, and crank you know push the print button. This is something that has been in the works for years. It just happens to line up now <laughs> with the launch of of uh, Ryzen Threadripper and Ryzen. So it looks like they are reacting to AMD. I don't think the actual CPU designs that we're seeing today are are a result of Ryzen. We are seeing. Pricing that is a result of Ryzen, but we are not seeing the actual designs that are the result of, of Ryzen. So I mean, it is possible for more than one person to have the same idea. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then, you know, again, it, it takes a couple of years or more 
for these things to come to fruition. So it's uh, I know people want to read a lot more into it, but I don't think it's there. Uh, last couple charts, uh, we can flip that really quickly. We're going to sh- show you Premier. Uh, Premier, we're basically, hey, back to Skylake X being on top. Very nice. This is a CPU encode. I will say I also did CPU encode. And people go, oh, I use my GPU for encoding in Premiere. I don't care. Uh, the deltas between the 10 core and 8 core and 6 core were about the same, except you could, you know, cut the times in half. So if you're doing, say, a three hour render on your GPU, you know, it would definitely take longer on a four core than it would on a 10 core, even though you are doing that render on the CPU. I, I do select maximum render quality. Um, so that does make a difference, but it still does help to actually have more cores in Premiere, even up to 10 cores. So pretty good. Uh, next one, we're going to flip on to Rainbow Six. Uh, I'm not really going to run a lot of game benchmarks here. I've done a lot of uh, reading of uh, reviews on the internet, and for the most part, um, the message is like, yeah, it's uh, Skylake X is a fine chip for you know gaming. It's definitely a little slower in some things. Uh, in actually, the results you see here, it is number four be- behind Broadwell, Broadwell E, KB Lake. Uh, but, you know, you're looking at, what, 267 versus 274 in Rainbow Six Siege at 1910 medium. So we're not looking at a huge difference here. For the most part, it's like, you know, you're going to play your game. You're not going to you're not going to really suffer in, in uh, a frame rate advantage, disadvantage. So last one I'm going to get to. Actually, a couple. Actually, this one's cool. This is an <laughs> IPC chart where I take Skylake X. I took KB Lake, Broadwell E, everything, and I just clocked them at uh, 2.5 gigahertz, and I ran just Cinebench with a single thread. And the idea here is you can explore the instructions per clock of the chip, so sort of how efficient it is if they were all running exactly the same speed. Um, they're pretty close. There were slight differences from because of the B clock differences, but for the most part, uh, this is a good message for Skylake X because you would think it's basically 6700K, but we're looking at Skylake X here, having a higher IPC than KB Lake. Slightly. We're not looking at a lot. We're looking at it for people who can't see the chart. We're looking at 110 on Skylake X at 2.5 gigahertz versus a KB Lake part at 107 uh, at 2.5 gigahertz in Broadwell E, 106. And uh, actually, it's kind of cool. Haswell, an old Devil's Canyon park, but running at 2.5 gigahertz, 101. And uh, Ryzen 7, is if you can't actually see this chart because you're listening to the podcast, Ryzen 7 1800X, 2.5 gigahertz, 102. So I know AMD has said um, the IPC is closer to Broadwell, but you know I think this kind of tracks with I've, I've read other results, people saying, yeah, it's a little lower than what AMD said. Of course, this is just simply one test. This is, this is it may be another test that, that puts them a little closer, but you're not looking at a huge difference between uh, 101 and, and uh, uh, Broadwell part at 106. Uh, and the one thing I do want to point out is I do have the Vashera part on this chart. If you're going, wow, look how great Vashera is, that is actually not true because <laughs> I left it on air intentionally. I could not underclock my uh, 4 gigahertz Vashera to 2.5 gigahertz. It wouldn't go that low. So I just left it at 4 gigahertz. So that 94 <laughs> that you're seeing versus a Haswell running at 2.5 gigahertz, the, the Vashera is 94. Haswell is at 101. Uh, and Sandy Bridge, ancient 2600K, is at 89. So, yeah, hey, Vashera is faster at <laughs> 4 gigahertz than a 2.5 uh, gigahertz Sandy Bridge chip. Sorry, I just, sorry, FX fans. This, this was actually the there. most interesting uh, graph that you had in your whole review to me. I did not expect Skylake X to top the 7700K in pure APC. I really did not either. And, and I think that is one thing that uh, people got to remember is Skylake X is not Skylake K. This is not a 6700K part. Um, 6700K part was primarily a mobile first part. Um, Skylake X is a server part. So, you know, power be damned, right, for the most part. So it's it's got other, it's got AVX 512. I couldn't get, the weird thing is I could not get AVX 512 to run on my board after I updated the BIOS. I actually ran it a week and a half ago in a demo. Then I came back, I, I reloaded the OS, and, you know, and then I got the latest BIOS for it, and I could no longer run AVX 512 in Sandra, which is the only one I can think of where there's a, a benchmark for it. So Sandra does have a built-in benchmark for AVX 512 performance. It's awesome because I will say I ran it again a week and a half ago, but I, there's nothing I have that I can show that to you, but that's probably realistic because AVX 512, which is supposed to give you awesome performance um, over, you know, we're not talking 10% games, we're talking a 40% gain if, you know, 
AVX 512 is turned on, just pulling that number on my my nose orifice. <laughs> but there's just nothing that supports AVX 512 today, really. So as but we will see as there's more AVX 512 perform uh, apps. You know, it'd be interesting to see where where Skylake X ends up. So. And the last one. I have a question. Oh, go ahead. I have a question first. Go ahead. I'm going to derail this. So you're talking about the BIOS, right? Yeah. I've heard other people say they had some pretty severe BIOS issues, other reviewers, as they were reviewing this. How did the BIOS handle for you? Did you have many issues besides that? Uh, I didn't. I, so originally the board I, I have, I ran this on a X99, a Prime X99 Deluxe. I ran it with an 001 BIOS initially. Then I got a shipping, closer to shipping BIOS of a, a 0401. I had no issues, honestly. Um I will say though, I mean, like I, I, when we were first seated the board and processor at a workshop, other people were having issues. There, this definitely was not the smoothest launch. Um, let me say, and and there's, besides the performance, so the performance is awesome for what it is. There's a lot of caveats, a lot of big ass asterisks here, but there's a lot of stuff we don't know. Like, uh, my review is written. All the reviews are written. None of us know how much Intel VROC will cost, right? And, of course, this is something we discussed last time in the show. Intel Virtual RAID on CPU, awesome feature. You can you know, you know can RAID up to 20 NVMe PCIe drives to the CPU and boot into a Windows partition. I don't know how much. Nobody knows. Uh, <laughs> Intel was I, I was like, are we going to know? Like, yeah, yeah, we're getting that info for you. Well, it's after launch. You don't have it. One thing I do want to mention, which I probably should have the last time, is this doesn't mean you can't get RAID 1, 5, and 10. RAID one, five, and ten, and zero still supported on the PCH. That is the chipset that is on the board, just like it was on X ninety nine, just like it is on Z two seventy. You can do all that, but um, are you really gonna are you really gonna raid four NVMe PCIe drives on your PCH and then squeeze it through a by four Gen three connection? I don't think so. It's better to go straight using all that fat PCIe into your CPU. So, I I think it's a, it's a not a good sign that we don't have pricing for VROC. And again, so for Core i9, this is the this is the sole Core i9 chip, the 10 core part. The 12, 14, 16, and 18, those are coming later. Like I think uh, August, I think is for 12, and then October for 14 through 18. Whew. Wow, that's, that's a ways, ways out. <laughs> yes, and that jinx. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know that's a long ways away. And that, and you know, and again, this we can get into general discussion. This is, I think, the pressure from AMD, right? I, I honestly think this 10 core part was what Intel was going to launch with originally when they put Skylake X on the roadmap two years ago. And of course, now we have Ryzen, now we have Ryzen Threadripper. Now suddenly we have 18 core core i9 parts that probably were not planned two years ago. So they will be taking their server. Xeons special, like basically the best of the of the Xeons that can clock up that has the, the Turbo Boost 2 stuff, and they will be moving those to consumers. So that is that is direct. I my feeling is that's a direct result of, of AMD and, and Ryzen. And of course the price. I, right. I totally agree because all the higher core count chips, the 12 through 18, they're just they told you how much they're gonna be and how much the cores are, but that's it. They had everything else is a question mark at this point. Yeah, it's rather odd, so. isn't it? Yeah, we know yeah. how we know how much we know what the core count is, but we know nothing else. We don't know clocks. We don't know anything else. So, uh, no PCIe lanes. Well, yeah, that's right. Uh, no, we don't <laughs> even know that. That's true, actually. We don't. I mean, I don't imagine they're Not gonna like. We're gonna like. We're gonna give you eighty five because AMD is giving you sixty four, but I think it'll still be forty four. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine them going adding even more. But maybe I don't they, know if you had an 18 core part with only 44 PCI lanes and you get Threadripper <laughs> with like 64. I mean, I don't think that looks great from a consumer's point of view. Yeah, I I can imagine. I yeah, but I I can't. Also, at the same time, I I don't imagine somebody at Best Buy going well. <laughs> Are they going to sell these at <laughs> Best Buy? Gordon? Threadripper I mean, has 64 on. PCIe lanes. Well, what? Well, sir, <laughs> do you do you happen to? Are you running or your home pornography? A uh, web server or something? Do you need all that storage? Like, yes, I do. Okay, well then, I guess you need that. You know, but see, no, I, I would think that more PCIe, more PCIe lanes would be beneficial in these kind of parts specifically because if you're spending the money on an 18 core CPU, you're probably doing heavy duty stuff, and you probably have heavy duty hardware accessories that go with it, like a sound card with extended storage, maybe a graphics card or two. So yeah, I mean, it's fair, but I mean, I don't think I ever heard of anybody running out of bandwidth yeah. on a on a, on the, a 40 lane uh, broadwell ear 
has one. Yeah, the it. previous Extreme Edition ships all had 40, 44, or something like that, PCIe lanes, and no one had a problem with it until now that Threadripper's coming out with 64. So, right, so I think now. that kind of says something. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I, I think they're both fine. I mean, I think it, I, I, my issue, <laughs> I think 44 is great. I'd be happy with 40 PCIe lanes. What I'm not happy with, and then we did touch on this last time, is, for, is Core i9 gives you 44 PCIe lanes. Uh, Core i7 with the Skylake X core uh, gives you 28, and as well as a 6 core. So the Intel, you know, snips off some of those PCIe lanes because you're too cheap. You're not paying them a thousand bucks, right? right. So, so if you I, go 8 core now, you're just kind of. Yeah, it <laughs> burns. It burns yep. because their $600 chips used to have 40 PCIe lanes. So it's purely a, a business decision. Right. Yeah, and no, I got to say, they got to, not like it matters. I mean, I mean, for the most part, people don't need even 40, right? But it just, bur- it's, it would burn me to pay what, whatever the, is it 500 bucks for the eight core part? Sky like X or is it six? I think it's like 600, 600, bucks. 600, 600 and bucks. The motherboards, and the motherboards start like the cheapest one you can get is 230 bucks. Right. So that would just, that would just burn me. So. Do we actually? I had one more chart. I don't know yeah. if we want to run it or not. And should we do it? Let's, Let's just do it. it. Yes, I yes. got it. Last one. This is just simply Cinebench R15 multi-threaded performance. This is kind of cool because it goes all the way from Skylake X 10 core down to that four core 2600K. Now this is with a clock speeds not locked at 2.5 gigahertz. And it just it's man we we are just it is just. The amount of performance you are getting today on a Core i9 is very nice. You know, and again, Broadwell E. And I got to say, my Broadwell E part, when I tested originally, I was getting about 1,800. And I've, I was looking at everybody else's reviews. They're about 1,850, 1,900. But I retested it. And uh, for whatever reason, the board that I'm running now is running all the cores at 4 gigahertz where it'll run it comfortably. And it's, it's you know, you, you don't have to upgrade if you have a Broadwell E. So no kidding. No. Yeah, at the same time, you paid one thousand seven hundred twenty-three dollars for it. So you're okay with that. It's but, a pretty decent jump too for our audio listeners. We're looking at what twenty-one hundred roughly for this seventy-nine uh, hundred X, and then uh, if you jump down to the Ryzen seven eight hundred X part, which is number three on the chart, that's uh, that's like sixteen hundred. Right. Event score. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, of course, you know, the moral victory is like, hey, I'm I'm only paying five hundred dollars for that, so. I actually think, like, looking at this chart, for me, and, of course, I sort of keyed on this when I originally was, like, my cheapskate was this. I wanted that that Ryzen 7 1700. Yeah, like, man. That is just, like, you are getting eight cores. You're getting, you know, and that's the stock clock. If you overclock it to four gigahertz, you're going to get a little more more out of it. You're getting a hell of a lot of performance for $300, right? $300 you're not that far behind those two 10 cores and you know it's it's tough to like eh. i think for most people six cores or that that ryzen 7 1700 it's a good part it's a really good part yep and especially because as far as we know most pretty much all of them will overclock to 3.9 4 gigahertz right around there so we'll get you right up there with the 1800x if you don't mind spending half an hour tinkering right and of course um you know, this is a multi-threaded benchmark. You look at, I think that's actually pretty cool too. Here's we're seeing um, the KB Lake. And this kind of surprised me because I hadn't looked at the scores in a while. But Core i5 7600K, no hyper-threading. is pretty much as fast as a Core i7, you know, the the weird Broadwell part, right? So that was the, that was a, a Broadwell made for um, LGA 1150X part. And it's the same damn performance. And that's with hyper-threading on that Broadwell part. And it is more performance than you're getting out of a Sandy Bridge, a Quarry 7 2600K uh, with hyper-threading. So that, that, is, that is very impressive of, of that 7600K part. I think a lot of people recommend that as sort of their like budget gaming part. And I, I, I got to agree, mm-hmm. that's a really good, really good chip for it. So, uh, Gordon, we got a lot of people in chat asking about <laughs> real-world buying advice. Charts are all good and well. All right. You know, a lot of people tuned off. It was just real boring, all those numbers. I, I'm Too many out. numbers? Uh, but <laughs> but really, you know, more importantly, you're, you're not adding anything in here about price. You know, price to performance is, is the whole other side of the coin, <clears> right? You know? Well, it's from... I mean, also people are like, hey, should I wait for the more consumer uh, coffee lake? You know, stuff like that. Well, I think... Uh, 
it's from a certain point of view, as Obi Wan said, right? So, <laughs> look, you're getting <laughs> from Obi Wan or uh, Obi Wan's point of view, you're getting more performance that Intel was charging you one thousand seven hundred and twenty three dollars for just a year ago. Woo! So <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, no, it's still for thousand. I mean, it's really funny. I was just I thinking about this. Like, what if they had Intel had? And they really should have introduced that Broadwell E at a thousand bucks, right? Yep. If they right. come out with that Broadwell E, it was a thousand bucks. Everybody said, "Oh my God, you gave us two extra cores for the same price you've been charging us for an eight core." Everybody would have been happy. The eight core would have like migrated down to you know six hundred. Everybody would everything would be, you know. But we're in a different world now. Yeah, a thousand dollars for ten cores versus. You know, five hundred or four hundred dollars for an eight core from AMD. Yeah, that is a that is a that is a that's a tough one to swallow, and for multi-threaded tasks, right? So again, when we're talking about the strengths of this chip, now Skylake X, the strength is it's going to kick ass in all your three D rendering, all your heavy duty loads, media encoding, things where you're really going to use twenty threads. You know what? People go like, yeah, thousand dollars. That's a ripoff. You know what? If I'm sitting there and I'm getting paid as a freelancer to render a project and it takes me five hours on a, on a 7700K, and it takes me two hours on a 7900X, hell, that's worth it to me. That's money in my pocket, right? So it pays for itself. So it's your point of view. If you were looking at just purely games, yeah, different world. So, and for best bang for your buck, yeah, clearly you can't beat Ryzen. You just can't beat it. You can't beat eight cores for that. Look at that, that Ryzen 7 1700 part. That is 300 bucks for... 75% the performance of a 10 core part basically. And what uh, yeah. and what do we think the upcoming coffee like, you know, which is a little more geared towards mainstream going to going to bring in for this. I mean, it should should people wait? Should people hang on? Should they go for Ryzen? I mean, if they got the money to burn, sure go for Skylake. I you know, I don't know what the core count's going to be on Coffee Lake. It's another 14 nanometer part that we I've 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 lost count. There's so many lakes. Can there's Cannon Lake, there's Coffee Lake. Do you remember Brad or Elena? I I just <laughs> Yeah. No. So the next one is another iteration. It is a 14 nanometer part. Um, so they're stretching out 14 nanometer again. If we're, I think Cannon Lake is a 10 nanometer part. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's 2018. I think that's right. We're talking 2018 here. If you can wait, if you can honestly wait that long, then wait. It's always better to wait. Prices are always better. And I will say Skylake X pricing will be better next year. You know, Threadripper will be here. More competition is better. Prices get lower. Yeah, if you can afford to wait. If you got to buy right now, then you buy based on, you know, what your needs are. I was talking about this the other day. Like, there is no such thing as you'll see a lot of people say, what's the best CPU? There is no such thing as the best CPU. There is such thing as the best CPU for you. You play games. That's all you do. You play single-player games at home or you play games at home. You don't do all the I'm going to stream to Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook at the same time. Yeah, 7,600K, can't beat it. Right, it's it's awesomeness for that kind of gaming purpose. You play games, but you also you know work for a living. You do media encoding. You're a video editor. Yeah, then uh, honestly, uh, a hopefully the I would probably do you know um, for the best bang for the buck. Then you're looking at Ryzen seven, right? Because eight core or the six core, the Ryzen five. But if you the problem with those is they are they are PCIe limited. If you do need more PCIe lanes, then um, X well. The boards, the board, Brad can probably talk about board prices, but uh, X299 boards with the six core uh, Skylake X part, if you can get it, um, which I don't think you can right now, is, is not a bad nope. choice either to get all the PCIe lanes. You just, well, more. I mean, 28 is more than 16, right? So that that just burns me. Yeah. The KB like X part? <laughs> Oh, the KBA Lake X part is, yeah, I didn't even, I did not review it. But yeah, KBA Lake X is even worse because it's 16 lanes of PCIe. So that is, I, I don't even understand. And a lot of people I've talked to don't understand it. It's very odd. Literally no point in buying it over KBA Lake. The and core. especially yeah. because you're going to spend $250 on that part. You then have to spend at least $250 on a motherboard. And that's crazy to me. And yeah. You're so limited on what you can do with that motherboard. At yeah. that point, dual channel, only 16 PCIe lanes. Yeah. But, you know, I, I sometimes I, I really suspect Intel made that because they want to cater to the overclocking sports people. Mm -hmm. because yeah, I that, think they've said that even. Yeah. So, you know, I guess I guess that's fine. But I kind of wish it had been the prices had been built that way, because I honestly think their six core Skylake X part would feel more competitive, you know, Dan, it like, you know, Ryzen 5 pricing. Right. 
because mm-hmm. the six cores were six cores. Skylake X is probably going to track a little bit faster, but you know, is it is it four hundred dollars more? You know, it's four hundred dollars mm-hmm. versus you know two hundred dollars for a six core uh, Ryzen five part. So, or is it two fifty? The most the most interesting part of this lineup to me, even though you didn't review it, is still the eight core part, which is yeah. six hundred dollars, right? Uh, which, if you look at that, that's only a hundred dollars more than AMD's eighteen hundred X. Yeah, and you know it beats it in IPC performance. Right. So it's like, sure, Ryzen is damn good parts at damn good prices, but if you're looking to buy something similar and you want the best at that core count, uh, an extra hundred dollars doesn't seem too extravagant to me. Yeah, that is. I mean, that that eight core part does look attractive, but. You know, then you're burned because you only get 28 PCIe lanes, which is still better than what you're getting out of saying, Ryzen. I was gonna say it's still more than what you get with the uh, 800X. Man, it just, <laughs> it's just just like you know it's in there, it's turned off, just to just to make you angry. It well, just... yeah, because I mean they used to give you more with that core count, so not having it now feels a little bit like they just like yanked that string. God, you know you would when just... you take something away, it always burns. You would just thought they said, "Look, we gotta be competitive. Let's just give people, give the people, yeah, give give the people the the forty PCI, forty four PCIe lanes, right? That's that's from Total Recall. People don't know. <laughs> uh, what else do you want to cover on this topic? We do have a couple people in chat asking about the new Sound Blaster. You know? Oh, really? So, uh, yeah. Well, what else have we got to cover on this? I think we're good. We've. We, What's the bottom line? I want to hear the straight bottom line. So the bottom line is straight talk. Um, if you got to buy, if you need the badass multi-core part now, and you got to buy right now, uh, buy Skylake X. If you can wait, wait for Threadripper. Let's see what AMD can bring. Let's see if they can bring them out in in enough yield to compete. <laughs> At the same time, I was looking today. You can't buy no ten-core part on New Egg or Amazon, right? So impossible to get. Uh, I would. You know, again, if I had to do it today, you know, Skylake X, but if I could wait, I don't know, until whenever, you know, Threadripper comes out, I'd wait a couple months. Because just, you just want to see what, what, what AMD has to offer before you make a move. It's, it's, a, it's a big investment for a system like this. So I, uh, I would wait. At the same time, currently, until Threadripper shows up, um, this right now is, is, the, is the big bad mama, right? At, uh, for 1000 bucks, 10 cores, high clocks. Better IPC than even what you're getting out of KB Lake even. So it's hard to beat that. Except it's a thousand dollars. Nice. It's All better right. than seven eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Move on to uh Sound Blaster. Really? So people actually want to know okay, well yeah, see. The, the couple do, do yeah. you have fellow people out there I did not yeah. commune with. Yeah, it's probably like, is it actually everybody at Creative right now? Like, oh, they're gonna go about Creative. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna make. Do we want to roll B roll or do we want to just? Hey, I've got some B roll. Yeah. So you, you just yeah, tell me. You know, you see. just talk. Right, so we're just talk. So basically, uh, I did a hands-on preview at PCWorld.com. I have not reviewed it yet because clearly, uh, sorry, Skylake X more important than Sound Blaster card. Um, it's a brand new right, sound here card. Of course, oh, here we, we go. Lights. We have a digital connector. Looks like you can just Beautiful, buy huh? more LED digital lights. String Brand new sound card is not something people. you'd expect to hear in 2017. <laughs> well, it I have think... LED lights too. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems so like that. Really? Yeah. Why is it, why is it, why are there lights on a sound card? Because that's the thing now. Everything has to flash. I know, but everybody was like, "Okay, I uh, you, you lost me there." Because it's a sound card, it's just to make it sound better, not like make your case look better. But <laughs> it's just a you know, creative says, "Hey, you know, we throw the lights on there." And gamers are like, "Oh, oh, buy it. It's got LEDs." So look, there you go. The LEDs there. I just yeah. spent like twenty or thirty bucks to get an LED strip for my new case. So. Uh. I- uh, I'll bow out of this conversation. <laughs> I, I would say it's also not just the strip, but I mean the the card itself. They they put R- RGB lighting on the card. Yeah, there's itself, RGB right? lighting yeah, on so the. That, that's nice. You get a lot of out of it. I mean, so you know, uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> the lights are what everybody notices, but they're actually under the hood. There's quite a bit of change. Uh, for the most part, the the uh, sound core 3D stuff is the same, but they have added a 32 bit um, ESS DAC, and the amplifier is now two uh, two separate amps, for, one for each channel of your headphones and there's a special jack on the card for the headphones creative says like yeah you know no one's really using speakers anymore we need to address people that are using great big cans it'll drive those really high impedance high resistance you know i like to say resistance for some reason because i'm not an electrical engineer but (laughs) i i i i uh it's it'll drive those 500 ohm 
you know, cans that people run. So the studio quality cans. So, and, you know, you have all the, the cool creative stuff, but for the most part, the audio quality should be pristine. I did a just quick listen. I liked it over onboard audio, which I think is probably what I would put it against. Elena, actually, I think you had a different opinion, but we didn't have much time to really look at it. So Well, you also kind of spoiled the test. <laughs> I you know. Told me I which, know. You told me which one was which, and I was like, dude, you had to do a blind taste test here. <laughs> <laughs> because now I don't know if I'm like subconsciously tainted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we got a great question. Uh, from the chat, uh, what is this? Uh, Tech and Gamer for Life yeah. on YouTube says, uh, "Do you think the average person would need a sound card?" <laughs> I well, have a thought. Oh wait, Brad's gonna go. Brad, please. I have a thought. Yes, uh, I've been testing some other a twenty-four bit uh, sound blaster card. As someone who has traditionally just used normal headphones, motherboard <laughs> audio. I mean, why spend more? Uh, and I've actually noticed sounds that I didn't hear before through my standard. You know, I have Razer Krakens. I have a uh, other headphones and i'm hearing sounds like an xcom i'm hearing crackling speakers as i get next to them that i never heard before <laughs> so if you're spending a bunch i don't think it's a must-have by any stretch of the means but if you're spending a lot of money on a gaming rig already and you're spending a lot of money like on the graphics cards and the visuals i think it's a good extra purchase to get more out of your audio as well as your video and the rest of your games and everything like that that's pretty fair I mean, I've, I've always used a sound card, so I, I think onboard doesn't... Yeah, it works, but do you think the comparison is... Like I was saying, although I, I don't think the scale is right, it's like uh, an IGP, somebody just playing, you know, a low-end game on an IGP versus, you know, an entry-level, you know, GPU. What's what's better, right? You, yeah, you could do this on that IGP, but it's going to be ugly right so motherboard i mean motherboard that's what i've always used motherboard audio and i've never had an issue with it and i think that if you don't have the budget for it then stick with that because it works just fine but if you have you can get sound cards for 100 bucks this one's a fancy 32 bit one i think that's the first 32 bit one ever and it's 150 bucks so if you're already spending a thousand dollars on a fancy gaming rig i think it's worth the extra 100 bucks yeah just experientially that's, yeah. And, oh, go sorry. Ahead. No. I also think need is kind of a strong word, right? I yeah. mean, it really also depends on how good your hearing is. There, there are some people that I know who can't pick out certain details, even if you have them set up on a really high end kind of setup. Whereas some people, like my father, I mean, that man can pick out the faintest detail in like a hail of bullets in a a movie. So, it, it, I would also just tailor your purchases to what you know about yourself. That's from having children, I will say. Because you're right. Brad knows. <laughs> the, no, no, I, I'm not making this up. You'll be sitting in the living room, and you you can hear that crackle of the potato chip bag opening up. Whoa, what kitchen. was that? It's like, no, what are you doing, right? Marianne, what are you doing? Opening the potato chip bag. It's like, no, you can't eat potato chips. It's too close to dinner. Now, you don't have that sound card. That's like, you're not going to hear your kid. You know, and that's not the same. So uh, there, there is some chat uh, in YouTube. You know, people are talking about, hey, the, the price, uh, you know, versus getting an external DAC, which, you know, as, yeah. as a video sound professional, uh, I've always run external DACs, you know. So uh, do you guys have a, a preference, uh, you know? Uh, do you want something uh, external like that, or would you rather get a video card? Oh, you mean sound card? For me, sound I, card. I'm I, sorry. I, so the the one thing that the whole external DAC, you know, external because I mean your USB, your just your cheap old USB um, cans that everybody runs today, that's an external DAC, right? So you there's no that's all done outside the box. That sound Real will low be end, yeah. even on low end. That sound will be cleaner than most of the uh, of a cheap motherboard the sound will be actually cleaner because yeah. it's external but so the the one argument that i still believe in although it is very hard to justify is a sound card lets them do post-processing it lets you if if there actually is any advanced you know 3d audio that is even done anymore in today's games it will let you take advantage of that more so than um an external deck which can be pristine but you're not going to do all the fancy Direct Sound 3D stuff. Now, the problem is, you know what? Direct Sound 3D is dead. Um, it's really hard to get anything that supports kind of these advanced audio APIs. So it really doesn't... In that case, it's like, yeah, it's probably better to run a DAC. I mean, unless Microsoft comes back and says, hey, we want to support 
uh, Direct Sound 3D, or there is also the Xbox Audio, I think X Audio 2 or something like that. If that is if that is done inside internally, then yeah, I mean that's that's you're probably going to get a better experience out of a Sound Blaster card or or a Zonar than you are from an external uh, Asus Make Zonar than you are from an external deck. Long answer. Do you think it's worth the price difference? I I don't know. I, I, it's tough. Like it depends, right? So yeah, you're talking. If I'm talking like you taking one hundred fifty dollars and you taking a step down from a ten eighty to a ten sixty or ten eighty to a ten seventy, I gotta say go with the ten eighty. I'm sorry, I love audio and all that, but if you're looking at giving up that kind of performance to go from a ten eighty to a ten eighty Ti, <laughs> take that Ti and run. At the same time, you've got your build, you've got your 1080 Ti, you've got your all this other stuff, and you're just looking for ways to justify paying for your 44 lane Skylink <laughs> CPU. <laughs> Drop a sound card in there. Although, I mean, the card is like a buy one card, so it doesn't take a lot of bandwidth. No. But, but clearly, um, yeah, if you, it's an extra. It's like I, I actually thought I, I would you consider an external? Uh, I'm not an external. Would you consider a sound card like G Sync? Like, you know what? I play on a 60 hertz panel at home. I'm fine. But I can tell you, G Sync is just beautiful. And Free Sync, let's give the shout out to AMD too. It's beautiful. It's just like, could you go back to running on a 60 hertz panel after you've done G Sync or Free Sync? Once you've used that, you can't go back. And I, now that I've been dabbling in sound cards, I consider it the same. I'm always going to have some sort of either an external deck or a cheap sound card and all my computers going forward. There are luxuries that are nice to have. And once you get used to them, you can't go back. Yeah. So uh, I- Igloo says, uh, so Gordon basically says, unless you have a 1080 Ti and an i7, you shouldn't even consider a sound card. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's one way to summarize what you said. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I would not buy a $150 Zonar or, or Sound Blaster to put in a $500 build. I just think that's illogical. I would make my $500 build a $600 build and put a better GPU mm-hmm. in, put a larger SSD in. I mean, it's unfortunate. The PC, every PC is a life raft, right? Who are you going to push overboard, right? I, when you're down at that low end, <laughs> the power supply goes overboard, <laughs> case quality goes overboard, and it's like, well, sound card, you're gone too, right? And then just go yeah, from but there. You, go, you subscribe to the philosophy of dumping everything overboard <laughs> in order to get to your price. You know, like you are so focused on specific parts where like you're actually willing to buy a case with an included PSU and use yeah, it. Yeah, I will do that because... I, but for you some gotta, people, audio is a big deal. So, I mean, yeah. that's the beauty of the PC, right? Where you can actually tailor your build to what really matters to you. Yeah. <laughs> if you like care, if, even if you don't game, like if you just like listening to music, I think that would, these would be good additions. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Well, and hey, to your earlier point when you're talking about speeds and feeds, you know, the not a lot of people don't have a PC just for gaming, right? They're doing other yep. things. So if you're doing content creation... Yeah, you want good sound, you know, like that, like it's like I I need that. So it's it's a uh, definitely I would I would much rather take a, uh, you know, one step down video card and be able to have good audio in there because I do like a ton of work on there. So to me, it makes sense. Yeah. It's also, would, go ahead. Sorry. I would say that if you've got a decent PC, it's a great addition for 100 bucks. Like if you have like a Core i5 or Ryzen 1600 XPC, and you have a GTX 1060 or 480, you know, a good 1080p machine, I would rather spend 100 bucks on a sound card at this point than I would to upgrade to another higher step-up graphics card or processor. If you have a good enough PC, that's a, it's a decent $100 add-in or less. Yep. <laughs> what was that noise? He dropped his fidget spinner. <laughs> you dropped your fidget yeah. spinner? I always sit here. Do you really have a fidget spinner? Oh, no. No, I have all kinds of cables. I just I'm just giving him crap. It's a USB He's cable. The... He's plugging it in like, Is it which way it never goes in the mic? Actually... It's a SATA cable. Oh, he's got an official PC World fidget spinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, are you going to do a, a review on this? Uh, I'm, what can people look forward to? I Yeah. So people look forward to what I really want to do. Um, actually, I'm going to give a shout out. Uh, Tech Yes City actually did a pretty a thorough analysis of the audio coming out of the, the uh, AE5, Sound Blaster AE5. He said it's stellar. Um, I'm going to be running some blind test tests because I really want to see. I, I'm going to take a very good motherboard. Great onboard audio, and I'm going to put it up against AE5. Get a bunch of people. I'm not going to tell them what's in it. Ask them what they prefer. So that that's my plan for how to review the quality of it. So awesome. We'll see. So do we want to get to the heavy hitter? 
Yes, this is the I'm one excited about this about. topic. All right, let's 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 move it on. Do Elena, I, Elena, so Elena's gonna bring this us up me. to this one. All right, so you know, last week was it? Last week feels like ages ago. Last week was E3. Yeah, it was ages yes. ago. So, oh. Like a, oh. a week ago, Microsoft officially announces Xbox One X. Uh, so it's their that's their official name now for Project Scorpio, the 4K console. Uh, we didn't get any really new information in terms of what's under the hood. Just really the name and the games was the, were the main focus, and the price and the launch date. So November seventh, five hundred dollars. Once one configuration, as far as I can tell. So for five hundred dollars, I mean you can build a PC, and honestly you can build a 4K 30 th PC. So I decided just as a fun exercise, I would go through and try to price out a PC and see how low I could get it, given current pricing and what the state of things are right now. And oh boy, people are really <laughs> interested in that topic. Is that a, like a plus interested or more like they, they want to... Well, it was interesting because <laughs> I, I wrote it from a very neutral perspective, right? Because I have one foot on like each side of the divide where I really love the PC, I love what it can do, but I mean, I started as a console gamer and always kind of kept up with that. I think we almost all started as console gamers. Of course, mine was an Intellivision, so. <laughs> Actually, I guess it was an Atari. <laughs> Nice. Speaking of, apparently uh, Atari is going to be bringing back some hardware, TBD. Yeah. 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 Weird. Atari well, is not Atari anymore. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah. But I was just like, really? You guys are still like doing that like death spasm thing? Like, I thought you just kind of given up. They only exist because of Blade not. Runner, basically. Yeah. Um, so, hey, uh, so. real quick, you know, maybe start off with you with your thinking that went behind this and then kind of go over the, uh, I, I pulled it up here too, you know, so kind of step us through what, what what you uh, put in. Okay, so the the one problem with the build is obviously since Microsoft uses semi-custom parts, you can't find the exact equivalent off the shelf. So I decided just f for the sake of it, partially for cost and partially it thematically keeps up with it, I went with as much of an AMD build as I could. So I grabbed for my part list the FX 8300, which at the time was $90. That is, I mean, on paper, I guess it's an eight core part, but we all know it's not really an eight core part. <laughs> well, it doesn't perform like a modern eight core, yes. Right. FX fanboys. So it would still beat the pants off of uh, the Jaguar cores. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Undoubtedly. Right. Yeah. So, Undoubtedly. I mean, when you're, when you're putting what, like maybe like a five year old up against a four year old to have a punching contest, it's kind of like, okay, well, that's, that's cute. So, FX 8300 uh, motherboard. I I picked the cheapest I could find, and I I also did my best to make sure it was actually compatible and wasn't going to fry. And as best as I can tell, that CPU will work with that motherboard <laughs> if people on forums are to be believed. It should. It should. It's uh, so the first uh, the ASRock or the FX 8300 90 bucks, and then the ASRock 970 Pro 3 motherboard 45 dollars. Yep. Damn, forty five dollars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like there is that are the build, whole motherboard. Are, or is that just like part of it? <laughs> there are build notes in this, so like that. So this is all pricing as of uh, June fifteenth, which was last Thursday. I published the article on Friday morning. Uh, so that forty five dollar price includes, I think, a ten dollar mail in rebate or fifteen dollar mail in rebate. Um, RAM, I just grabbed eight gigabytes of uh, standard DDR3 RAM, sixteen hundred megahertz. Single dim. Single, Single dim. dim. It's for cost. God, forty seven dollars. Yeah, for RAM, RAM price. price is crazy yeah. these days. Yeah. That RAM stick costs more than that whole motherboard. <laughs> well, the, the kicker. <laughs> it does. It's forty seven dollars. And the kicker is, is that you can get DDR4 RAM for like that price or slightly lower. Yeah, DDR3 is just cuz they're I don't think anybody's fabbing it. It's just like I know. what's sitting around it's in the It's starting in the to become like a vintage part at this point. <laughs> yeah. But I did that 8 gigabytes just so that because it's a PC and you're probably going to be running other things, like I didn't want to hobble it unnecessarily, even though for gaming you're going to be relying on the memory and the graphics card. So that's 47 bucks. And then the graphics card comes with a Big fat asterisk because, as we all know, it is really hard to get 1080p cards right now. So I picked for the build an RX 580, the 8 gigabyte version. And in theory, if it were in stock, 
it would be a it would be two hundred and sixty six dollars from a vendor right now. But we all know one, that's not the list price, and two, that's not the actual going price on right. the street because you can't get them because of yeah. miners. So you can buy them used for four hundred dollars. Oh my god. Oh, it's we're, going up we're, even more since we last talked. We're we're gonna yeah. save that for after this. We're let's let's get through yeah. I wanna get through this parts list. Yeah, cause. so and then uh, just grabbed a uh, one terabyte hard disk drive, fifty bucks. Now Microsoft didn't give any details about what type of drive it was. They didn't say if they were sticking with the fifty four hundred RPM drive, if they had gone to a seventy two hard seventy two hundred RPM drive, or if they were taking a page out of their Elite configuration when they released that it was like a year, year and a half ago, which had a hybrid drive. Oh really? Yeah. So and that was like their premium one, which costs like an extra hundred bucks or something. And since this is a five hundred dollar console, I could see them putting it in, but there was no confirmation. All there was was like in the digital foundry like preview that we all read back in April, they hinted at some kind of like fifty percent more bandwidth. And it's like what the heck does that mean, you guys? <laughs> like, oh. did you change the connector type? Is it now like SATA three instead of SATA two or so I just picked for sake of simplicity seventy two hundred RPM drive and I just moved on with my life. <laughs> fifty um, bucks. Fifty bucks. One one terabyte caviar blue. And if you want to read you can go to PC World, this story's still there. Yeah. Uh, optical drive because Xbox One has an optical drive. This is this is where you have to make a sacrifice to even get close to five hundred bucks. I went with a standard Blu-ray drive for forty three bucks. Uh, the next build, the upgrade, the upgrade build, quote unquote, uses an actual four K uh, Blu-ray drive, and as I'll explain in a moment, it completely like changes the pricing. Yeah. And then for the rest of it, I just kind of picked the cheapest things possible that wouldn't potentially blow up the case so no no psu case combos <laughs> yes, you got ripped off here no no this is Come these are pretty on. decent prices so 35 dollar 550 watt uh 80 plus bronze psu uh just like a standard atx case from a manufacturer that was well known enough that i don't think i'm going to get cut when I'm trying to put parts into it <laughs> Because you can go lower, you can go lower, but that's when you start sacrificing actual blood for the for the cause. <laughs> All right, so Thermal Take five fifty power supply, and then Thermal Take Versa uh, case. I mean, Thermal Take's a no name. So seventy bucks, seventy bucks for your case, sixty nine dollars. <laughs> so that's like a man. That, that is not a that's not a budget build. You should like. My feeling is it should be like twenty five dollars for case and power supply. I'm not <laughs> willing to risk the power supply that you would choose, and I'm also not willing to risk the the like bloodshed that is sure to occur. And I have smaller hands, and I still have problems with that. And then finally, OS, uh, we use Brad's technique of uh, getting a was it penguin? I don't know how to pronounce it like penguin penguin license. Mm -hmm. And then the yeah penguin. Another uh, ten bucks for shipping because I couldn't find anything that was uh, completely free or didn't qualify for Prime shipping. Okay. Total price, not including tax now, and if you were really good with filing all your rebates, six hundred and fifty-two bucks. So, will this? So we think this would give you Xbox One X performance or close to it, I guess. Yeah, because I mean, console gaming, they're they're probably not. They're, I mean, they're not going to be able to shoot for anything like higher ultra. So they're playing at normal, oh, yeah, medium definitely. settings. Yeah. And they're not going for. They're not going to get sixty frames per second in every game. So thirty is the bare minimum for what I was going for on this. I mean, that five. Yeah, the the majority of the cost is the five eighty. Do you think you could step it down and you know still nope. try to get five seventy? Wouldn't yeah. wouldn't cut it. All right, all right. Not nope, for four K. So that's Brett. Brad, you're the GPU expert here. For that's that's for a smooth thirty thirty frame rate. 30 <laughs> Ooh, careful! Per someone's second. gonna make that into a little clip. A smooth, <laughs> smooth, smooth, buttery smooth thirty frames a second experience there. Oh well, yeah, I mean, if you look at the teraflops, look because AMD makes this and it makes the GPU inside the Xbox One X. The the teraflops are like one to one right there. They're basically the same. It's the same kind of experience, and that. If you use a mixture of medium and high settings, which is realistically what consoles use, you could hit 4K 30 FPS in the majority of games with a 580, I think. Uh, if you go uh, down to a 570, you couldn't. If you go to, like, if you try to spend 200 bucks on a 3 gigabyte uh, GTX 1060, you cannot game at 4K with 3 gigabytes of oh. memory, so. Okay. Even if you uh, pumped it down to, you know, low settings? 
Oh, uh, you you could, but then you might as well just get an <laughs> Xbox One X, <laughs> right? So, uh, Elena, um, it's weird. I'm seeing this part list here, but where's where's the controller? Oh man, yeah. yeah. Oh, so uh, so it's, it's not really that price, right? Well, if so, here's the thing, and I <laughs> I should have made it explicit in the article, but I wrote it for PC World, and so most people on PC World are PC oriented. They're going to be interested in this from a PC perspective, which means most likely than not, they're going to play with a mouse and a keyboard. So I figured that the point of this build was from that perspective that you were just building a PC to mimic the performance level of an Xbox One X. And on top of all that, you would still have everything you can do with a PC. But that was like the number one piece of feedback I got because really? of course, because of course, this article attracted a bunch of people who are console fans, and, they yeah. and so they want they wanted to prove that their you know new thing to rally around is just that much even like that much more better. How is it? Yeah. Okay. So the Xbox One X gives you a ton of value for your money. Yeah. That's and basically the short of it. Because if you add on the 4K Blu-ray drive to this. You have to completely change this configuration. You have to add in a KB Lake processor, either an i5 or an i7, and then you have to change the motherboard. And there's only, <laughs> I didn't know this until uh, I chatted with Gordon, and this is yeah. after I published the article because he was so deep in the weeds with the Skylake X uh, uh, review that I didn't, you know, actually have a chance to really chat with him. And he's like, did you know that that Pioneer 4K Blu-ray drive that you put in there is actually only compatible with three motherboards? It's like, damn. <laughs> for the for the U, for the um, HDR stuff, yes. basically, you can do 4K Blu-ray on the PC. You, you just can't do it with the um, the HDR HDR stuff, right? And so that's specifically for just watching movies off a disc in HDR. So right. in order to have that capability to match the Xbox One X, you end up shelling out like another 200 something dollars. So the final build total for that was I think like 9 right something. <clears throat> and almost $300 more actually. And keep in like mind 944. That is for if you want to watch HDR, you have to have Intel SGX technology on the motherboard and that's only going to run through the IGP. So you're not going to be running it on, a, on an RX 580, which is another thing that is like, oh. So there's there's a lot of um, weirdness to getting. Pe and this is all for the DRM components that's in, yeah. embedded in HDR, <clears throat> in those, uh, those, those, those Blu-ray drives. So, so, so uh, They're very rare. They're very rare on PCs. It's surprising, actually. How, it's like impossible to find a 4K HDR Blu-ray drive. Yeah, because I mean, um, the 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 checkoff list to even get the thing to actually run Power DVD, which the new version supports fine. I've seen the demos; it's awesome. But <laughs> it's like, okay, this is not this is really hard to justify. I'll just I I will get an Xbox One if I'm going to do that. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, side note: There's a lot of people saying uh, they want more. Uh... Uh, hardcore hardware videos, Gordon. People are fans of are you your, serious? Of yeah, the last Horizon <laughs> one. Uh, but side note, Elena, um, why why not go with a, a free OS? Uh, you know, Steam OS or uh, or Linux. You know, <laughs> well, if you want a smaller games library, sure. So I mean, that's another thing about this build. So this number two thing that I got as a comment was a bunch of people pointing out that Microsoft obviously gets volume discounts. You know, it's the scale of which they can man you have these manufactured and like the volume pricing that they get, right? So it's like they kept saying, people kept saying, of course you can't beat or match or beat that price. I don't think that's necessarily true because right now we're in the middle of high RAM prices, higher storage prices, honestly. Right, there's no SSD to, in here. Right. And then on top of that, there's just that, what we're about to get to, the whole like crazy situation with the graphics cards at the, like that 1080p ultra range. Yeah. So I think as we get closer to holiday, this could really change so that by the time like November 7th rolls around with combination of deals and hopefully better availability, you could match that, honestly. 500 bucks. I think at the lower range, as long as you don't want that 4K um, HDR like disc playback ability. And honestly, being PC gamers, you can do a lot of the 4K HDR stuff through the graphics card as long as you're okay with not doing it through like optical discs. Right. So you're yeah. set on that side of things. 
I think it's the, possible. We'll see. I think it would have definitely been possible six months ago because six months ago or a year ago, uh, you could find 8 gigabyte RX 480, the predecessor to this, selling for 200 bucks on sale sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that would knock 66 bucks off. Mm -hmm. You could knock, if you don't need the optical drive, that would knock off another 43 bucks. That's 100 bucks off. Mm -hmm. You know, the RAM would have been half that price. So that would have been another 25 bucks off. And you could get damn close to 500 bucks. Just right now, it's a really hard mm -hmm. time to try to build a budget PC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, an another random side note. <clears throat> you know to play games online you know you gotta have xbox live gold you know and that's you know anywhere between 40 to 50 dollars uh, a it's year 60 a year well retail but yeah usually you can find a, a, a cheaper prices but you know on the pc you don't have to pay for that for online so you know just so a, little five things years, here and there yeah five times 60 that's so. oh yeah and you get steam sales and there's all kinds of benefits to being in the pc yeah. ecosystem but that doesn't i mean that's that's kind of a different conversation than yep. the raw hardware discussion yeah although i gotta say i that for you know, even for 650 dollar build that is a hell of a lot of hardware even at the inflated yeah. prices that it that it's you know we're sort of living in that's Mm -hmm. remember, remember, six hundred and fifty dollars used to be IGP <laughs> and a you know a, a, a four hundred gig hard drive. You know, and it was one of your specials with PSU yeah. tucked inside. Well, that's <laughs> the Gordon Look, special. You could have saved, you could have saved forty bucks right here if you'd gone with the case power supply combo. <laughs> <laughs> the secret there, my secret to the case combo move. That's my signature Gordon move. I I pulled that on so many people over the that's years. His finisher. <laughs> You, you you buy it from a company that has that you can call and complain to. So a lot of these people have lifetime warranties, but like Rosewell is a house brand for Newegg, and you can call up Newegg and say my power supply blew up, and you know eventually you'll get somebody and they'll replace it. Eventually you'll get somebody. Well, you know, it's phone support is not. We're not. You're not paying. You know, tier one boutique pricing where they come out and they switch your. They're gonna. It's gonna be work to get it, but. You can get it replaced. I think it's you know it's a good way to to, to really just cut a lot of the pricing off of it. So so uh, here's another good question from uh, Facebook. Um, Steven Lopez uh, wonders: Is Microsoft making any profit from the Xbox One X? You know, now that you went through this, wh what do you think? Do you think they're able to uh, he, squeeze some profit? He actually said, uh, I think it was a Business Insider interview that. So they asked him, are you losing money on this? And he uh, he wouldn't answer the question. He just said they're not making any money off of it. Huh. So that's the most we know. And that's Which is really good because in the classic console model, they just they take it in the shorts for years and years and years on the hardware. I mean, I can't imagine. I think Sony's still paying off the PS3, right? <laughs> it's like <laughs> 25 years later, they'll still be paying for it. Yeah. Like a 30 year loan for the PS3, I think. And that cell Phil processor. Spencer, yeah, Phil Spencer did note that it's not that way with this particular yeah. like model. That they're that's not their actual business model for this, that they just plan to take like massive loss on it to push the platform. Right. So it sounds like they're close to breaking even if not breaking even on this at least. Right. And they that's make, my feeling. They're right on the line. Yeah. And they make the money up in the software, so I mean, it's for them. It's pretty good for both. Yeah. For Sony and Microsoft, uh, basically becoming PCs, it's actually been a good deal for them. I think. Uh, yeah, this one, like the Xbox One X, actually like supports FreeSync monitors, and uh, mm -hmm. they've been talking about adding keyboard and mouse support over time. So. No, never. Yeah. And it's uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be VR ready, although they didn't say anything about it at nope. this year's E3. Yeah. This, yeah. this could definitely yeah. run VR. They, oh yeah. Just now. <laughs> but there's they haven't said anything about like what headsets they're going to support or whatnot. And they they seem to be still you know touting that flag of uh, Xbox games on PC you know like PC anywhere stuff mm -hmm. you know like I, yep. I I I felt like the PC was still getting love you know even even during this uh, round uh, we got a guy on YouTube uh, P D P Draggy uh, asks can you Ethereum mine on Xbox though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great segue right? for right. our next little that bit. Brings topic. I want I wanted to say something about this before we segue. <laughs> okay. All right, I want go to ahead. say something to Brad. The most interesting bit of this whole exercise to me is seeing how much it costs between the motherboard and the drive and everything <laughs> to add 4K HDR playback to a PC. And that makes me like the Xbox One S, the cheap 200 250 dollars one, that much more. Mm. Yeah, it's 250, I think. Yeah. But Crazy. you can get it for 200 on sale right now. But wait, let me point this out, though. So the RX 580 in here is 266. We know realistically 
if you can get one, that you have to stand in line in front of the store and get it at five o'clock in the morning, right? It's going to cost you 500 bucks. But <laughs> isn't it cheaper because now you can mine <laughs> with your PC? <laughs> like I've, I've seen estimates where they will pay off, like the GPU, your GPU purchase is paid off within three to four months of Ethereum mining, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's all about return on investment. Yeah, you can make a hundred, depending on the card, I've seen up to 150 bucks a month. What? God. Wow. Wow. That's Recently, because now they're in the middle of that pricing bubble, which I get is the segue, I guess. That's a segue. I think <laughs> oh, that segue. Which is that's my mo- that was my see you know, that was the news at eleven. That they was always great. like that was they great. always go like water is poison in your local reservoir. News at eleven. <laughs> it's eight o'clock. I need to know How now. Can your toilet kill you? <laughs> well, here's the national emergency. I have declared. I we we have officially declared a national state of emergency for GPUs. <laughs> You yep. can't get the damn things no more, right? <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can get a, you know, a ten fifty or five sixty or a ten eighty, and that's it. <laughs> Even those, it's ten eighty. I was looking; the prices have spiked up a bit. They're like six hundred and something dollars again. I, what the hell's going on? Is it really just the mining? It's the mining. It's all kinds of money, and all kinds of money are going through bubbles right now. And a lot of them, uh, I think we talked about this last time, uh, are reliant on GPUs. So, like, back when the Bitcoin craze came about and you couldn't buy Radeons forever, uh, it's kind of like that, except for now it's with, like, Ethereum and Zcash and stuff like that, different technologies. But Radeons have been sold out and impossible to get for a month now or so, maybe a little bit longer. And now, over the past week, it's starting to hit NVIDIA, too. Like, I just wrote an article about it today. You can't buy a GTX 1060 3 gigabyte for a reasonable price. You can't buy... Uh, the GTX 1070, don't even try to buy it. Like they're sold out. Like they're supposed to be 380 bucks. The cheapest one I found was 470 and most were closer to $600. Adam, Ooh. sell. Adam, sell your 1070 $600. car. $600. Yeah. Why don't you just buy a, a 1080 at that point? Yeah, I, that's what I don't gonna do it, If you're going to do it for gaming, you should buy a 1080. But the power use and efficiency combo of the 1070 makes it uh, more efficient for mining. Oh. Wow. Oh, my God. Those so, guys are – I picture them like, uh, you know, like the, the massive drug farms. <laughs> One of the things they have problems like, oh, my God, they because they can find them by looking at how much power they use. So they have to like – we have to minimize our power usage so they can't spot we're doing all this mining. You, know? <laughs> you go in there, there's all the grow lights, but it's just basically a bunch of Radeons and uh, GeForce cards. How, how many <laughs> – I want to know how many people are actually doing this from like their offices where like they don't actually track power consumption. They just quietly have it running under their desk while they're, you know, doing their spreadsheets for the day. I think you're giving people too many ideas here. <laughs> yeah, I, That's I don't know if watch. you're quiet, though. <laughs> the, I, somebody was telling me even the R9 cards, like, are fantastic at Ethereum. Like, so R9 yeah, older... S- the 390s and stuff like that, you can, if you have those, sell them. I, uh... Well, the problem is now you can't buy it. You can't upgrade to a 1070 oh anymore. So <laughs> I don't know. If you have a couple of them, sell them and get a 1080. Uh, well, it sounds like, uh, or at least uh, we got somebody in, in YouTube saying that there's uh, no shortage of EVGA 1070s in their uh, traded in program, the refurb program. Really? So who knows? But uh, that's their trade in program, though. That's different than going out and buying yeah, one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You would think the EVJ would just sell them to somebody at full retail, you know. We got a bunch of we got a truckload of these ten seventies. We'll sell them to you. You would think uh, they would take all these refurb parts and set up some GPU mining of their own, right? Yeah, you're right. Good way to ah. boost the bottom line. Oh, <laughs> there are OEMs. Well, there's system integrators is the correct terminology. Apparently, is that the, that have, that have actually done that. They they've actually set up farms for for the last last Bitcoin thing. I'm sure that they're redoing all that over again so what i'm worried about and this is worse than the last time because with bitcoin Which? you couldn't buy radions for i don't know, i swear to like a year and a half is this ever going to go away and then it's so bad now that people are just even buying geforce even though they're a little less they're less efficient than radion right they're just yes. buying them anyway um, it depends there's different technologies like they're better at zcash so on and so forth but yeah it's spreading <laughs> so what do we do? I mean, because it's only going to get worse. Hoard. Nothing. You just hoard what you have. Whine and cry. Yeah. Don't spill water on what you got. Oh my god. Or you sell it at a tremendous profit. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, just... but then you can't buy another one. That's the thing. Like people, what people were doing when this first happened is taking their 480 and selling it for you know 400 bucks 
and then going and buying a three hundred and eighty dollar GTX ten seventy. So upgrading the tier. But now the GTX ten seventies are sold out too. <laughs> so so now you have to upgrade to a 1080 Ti. It's only yeah. one you can get. Uh, well, well, that sucks. Yeah. I just had to, you know. I just had to. <laughs> it's all that was in there. Man, that's crazy. Uh, so yeah, the, this all this got sparked. Uh, we also had a question about about this, right? Uh, but yeah, we, we're on the the Q and A section. So if you have questions for these guys, just uh, chat yes. them in. And and, we actually have a bunch. We'll rapid fire. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, let's go through some ones. of them. All right, let's, let's start going through them because <clears throat> these are. This is from Don. I can't read my printout. It's so tiny. Don Loazzo. Uh Do you think... Oh, he sort of mentions it. Oh, no. Actually, this is on you, Twitter, correct? This is on Twitter. Uh, do you think this CPU gen is a mess? And next would be... I'm going to guess he's saying... And the next would be great for both... The next generation would be better for both Intel and AMD. I have a, a Core i7 3770K and a 1080 Founders Edition. And see no reason to, I'm going to assume, upgrade. Because Twitter, you can't fit more words in. So. Uh, yeah, he was looking for gaming and he has, he said in a follow-up tweet, a 1440 P 60 frames per second monitor, 1440, 60 ivory bridge with a 1080 founders edition. I, yeah, I mean, I so, think it, unless, it, go ahead, Brad, you want to, you want to go unless you're streaming or doing something else crazy while you're, uh, gaming, I would sit tight on that. Right. Hey, although I, I gotta say the chipset is just, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> it's ancient, <laughs> ancient, ancient crusty old chipset so there are some reasons to upgrade m.2 usb 3 1 all kinds of cool new new technology but yeah new. newer technology <laughs> faster if you don't need it then yeah if you're fine don't don't spend the money wait for something better right mm-hmm. next matt jarrett on twitter oh when i turn on or off my pc build the fans go hard for two or so seconds and then calm down temps and fan speeds look all right what gives question mark Anybody? My my past build did that as well. Like right, right as I powered it up, that they, they would spin up and then they would uh, come back down. Yeah. So I pretty would. Pretty standard. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Yeah. I, I think it's. Um, I go in. Uh, it's sort of. It's probably your motherboard just spooling the fans up to max voltage, and um, you you might be able to change the mode in it and the fan profiles to turn it down. Some of them also have a uh, dust blowout uh, modes where they attempt to blow the dust out of the system when you power up or power down by spooling the fans up at full speed it could hmm. be that hmm. um but my guess is it's just when you turn it on motherboard is giving everything you know maximum amount of voltage you're spinning up to all they can and then uh, it shuts off so I, I got a random question from me i'm, I'm start. i have a uh clc system uh god I, I guess i bought it in 2014 uh i'm starting to hear the faintest little bit of liquid noise you know when it's pumping through yeah should i be worried no, I wouldn't worry no? about it. Okay. I mean, I I would go till hey, the temperatures are not running right. Yeah. Okay. So I or you know what? Like everybody says, they all love their air coolers. <laughs> Walk by a <laughs> big giant air cooler and scratch the hell out of your hands when you put it in. So no, I, you know, there's there is that 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 is true. You don't really have maintenance on an air cooler generally. So, uh, next question, Garrett. At Metalhead eleven twelve four eight seven on Twitter, I recently upgraded to a two K G Sync panel. I'm running two nine sixty four gigabytes uh, cards in SLI, and it's not up to par. Upgrade now to ten eighty or wait for next generation. Brad, sounds like you. Uh, if it's not up to par with what you're doing today, you can always wait for the next generation with PC stuff. I mean, there's always something new right around the corner. Uh, we have no idea when Volta, the next generation NVIDIA parts, are actually going to launch. Um, we do know that AMD's Vega part is going to launch at the very end of next month, whether or not that's a hard launch or a paper launch. We don't know. So you might want to wait a month and see what that offers compared to the GTX 1080. But I would have no qualms buying a GTX 1080 right now. It's just a kick-ass card. and It doesn't look like NVIDIA's next gen is going to come out in the next few months at least. Yeah. And I, yeah, boy, you know, and actually he's perfect. He sort of, he luckily misses, assuming he's a he, yeah, it's a he, uh, he misses that whole, you know, 10, 1070, 480 thing. Cause he's got a 2K yep. G-Sync panel. So I'm going to assume, you know, a 120, 144 Hertz panel, 1080 would be great for that. So mm-hmm. I don't, I, yeah, I guess I'd wait and see what, what, uh, 
with the uh, oh, if he has G Sync, yeah. If you have G Sync, I would totally just get a 1080. <laughs> but don't you want to wait to see what AMD does, even if yeah, it's not all that the prices will. Come that's down, the price right? thing. I would say that even though you're not going to move to Vega, if they put enough pressure on Nvidia, it's likely Nvidia could drop prices a little bit more on the 1080 or even 1080 Ti. So that's a fine point. It's it's worth waiting if you're not in a rush. Right. Yep. Nvidia. But that being said. SLI 4G 4 gigabyte 960s will definitely be have issues with that display. So if you feel like you need to upgrade now, don't feel bad about upgrading now because you can only use the 4 GB of memory in SLI, and a lot of games don't support SLI. So yeah. he's probably having a rough time with that panel. Yeah, 960 is a little tough, I think, on a on a. a G Sync helps. Yeah, but you know, I could definitely see an upgrade. Definitely would be nice. But yeah, and you're right. Nobody's gonna. Not going to sell a G-Sync panel. You wouldn't go to Vega on your G-Sync, so locked into Nvidia and that's forever. Why, as much as I hate, as much as I love G-Sync and FreeSync, I hate them too. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish they would both just support a universal standard, but this is clearly why this dude's going to buy Nvidia till the panel dies, right? So, uh, next question. Oh, wait, we just talked about it. Uh, Garwin, we did talk about the squeeze. Average gamers, GPUs, yeah, we're just screwed. National emergency. <laughs> we need, we need like, there needs to be a Manhattan project to lower GPU prices or something. <laughs> Again. Uh, okay, Brad, what's your take? Our folks at, uh, at Kitsuga, this is from Fiona Fox, at Kitsuga Gaming, don't think the i9 is a home run for most gamers. I don't think Extreme Edition or Threadripper chips are in general a home run for gamers. I think you're better with the mainstream platforms. But I gotta say, isn't aren't isn't Kitsuka Gaming? Aren't they like streamers? Uh, I believe they are. Yes. So, so. <laughs> if I were if I were Intel, I'd say, well, hey, if you want to stream to um, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, what's the other one? Twitch. Twitch. Oh, there's one more too. <laughs> what's that other one? The whatever Twitch. If you want to do all three at the same time, and probably also send it to Twitter, you know they're arguing that yeah, you need a you need a Core i9 for that because it does help. And I think Gamers Nexus actually did some streaming tests, and um, he was finding that yeah, it does help if you're doing multiple, multiple, multiple services. So for- if you're yeah, he said it, it, it is a step up over Ryzen. If you are streaming to like YouTube and Twitch simultaneously, yeah. I think in the real world, the number of people who are streaming to both and not one or the other simultaneously is pretty small and is probably professional outlets like us. Yeah. Like, right. We're like, we'd be streaming to Twitch and YouTube simultaneously. But I think most people either switch stream to Twitch or YouTube, in which case, something like Ryzen would still probably be a better value proposition. Right. But at the same time, if you are doing multiple, multiple services, that's kind of a home run, right? So, mm-hmm. all right. Uh, uh, I don't know who this dude is. I'm just kidding. Nathan Edwards uh, of Wirecutter fame. I uh, used to work with Nathan. Landon did too, I think, right? Uh, he wants to know what the over and under on actual Thunderbolt 3 shipping on MOBOs now that Intel's opened up the spec. Uh, you've actually been able to get Thunderbolt 3 on the boards for about a year now. Maybe about a year and a half. Uh, as far not as many, I, though. Not many, mostly Gigabyte at first. Uh, Asus did do some adding cards. I, I definitely think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be on the very expensive motherboards um, now, especially because it's hard to justify the need on a desktop. It's great on a laptop. You can run external graphics. You can do all kinds of cool PCI, external PCIe stuff. But on the desktop, you're going to be running your GPU. You, re- you really don't need Thunderbolt 3. It's nice to have. Um, it's going to be a premium feature for at least, I think, 18 months, probably. That's too bad, though, because even on desktop, you can at least take advantage of the faster transfer speeds if you want to do for, like, The backup. ecosystem's never really popped up like you think it would. Like, there's not that many hard drives and stuff out there. I know, but I almost feel like it's chicken-egg sort of thing, right? Like, mm. no one's really adapting, or, like, adopting it, so then no one actually makes products for it, and so then it just kind of perpetuates. Yeah, it's expensive, and, you know, for the desktop, again, hey... You know, we got we got PCIe lanes. Uh, we hold 28 of them on some Intel CPUs. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, most people would rather just do that. So I, it's a tougher sell. It is a value add, I think. And, you know, I've gotten some boards. I've never used it outside of testing because you just don't need it. So, But, yeah, it will come because it's going to get cheap. It's going to get free. Uh, this is from Marshall Victory. 
Uh, PCIe NVMe versus M.2 slot speeds. Is the PCIe NVMe slower, slow enough to notice or about the same as an M.2? Anybody want to take that one? I could. I think that unless you're transferring large amounts of data regularly, they feel the same in everyday practice. Yeah, I, I, I think sort of one thing you also have to remember with M.2 is M.2 can be PCIe NVMe up to by 4 Gen 3. It could be HCI up to, you know, Gen 3, you know, by 4. It can be SATA 6. So if it's actually a SATA 6 in M.2, yeah, it, uh, NVMe will be faster. But like Brad said, are you going to be able to feel it? I'm actually going to try to do some testing uh, pretty soon so we can um, see the difference. Hook up a, two systems, exactly the same, one with SATA, one with uh, NVMe PCIe drive, and see what feels different to people. So Another blind taste test? Another blind test test. No, I, I think actually we're gonna we're gonna try to do the video on that one and, and we'll uh, play it back to see you'll be able to see where you start to see the slowdowns on one machine. That's the plan anyway. So in that, theory. Uh, this makes me want to go off on a, a quick tangent, just a sentence or two. The current state of storage technology is insane and confusing to normal people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because like what you just said about the M.2, that's totally true. And how's you know, my friend's gonna come to me and say, Hey, what kind of storage drive should I get? I can't explain that to him in a sentence anymore. Brad, Before your friend, I used to go get an SSD. But your friend will come to you and say, should I get the 7200 RPM hard drive or should I get the 5400 RPM hard drive? That's what most of our friends will say. I, I don't like, even get that. I get just the, what's an SSD? Yeah. Yeah, that's a Just bummer. buy one. I, I got to say, yeah, I don't, yeah. Yeah, it's a mess because there's definitely SAT SSD. There's, you know, M.2. There's U.2. There's... PCIe, there's bad luck. It's crazy. Well, actually, that's a, that's a great segue into one of the questions I had on uh, YouTube. Uh, e Lopez 580 uh, is asking, is U.2 dead on the desktop? I don't think it's dead. I, I think it's just it's just starting to get here. Um, there aren't too many U.2 drives. I can only think of one, honestly. Um, but it makes a lot of sense because, you know, I, although I say the trend is from Computex, everybody's like going, oh, our board supports three M.2 drives down on the board. And you've got, so it's hard to see a U.2 getting hold right now, but I would rather have a bigger, fatter, easier to cool U.2 drive over an M.2 card stuffed under a, a 1080 Ti card or, you know, whatever next gen, you know, card. It's just they overheat. Hey, and like, oh, I need to pull this drive out. To swap it out? Oh, no problem. Pull everything out of the damn motherboard just to get to the, the M.2 drive? That kind of sucks, let me tell you. So Yes. I, I, I hate when motherboard vendors put that underneath the graphics card. Mm -hmm. They don't have to. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, because it's, you know, they're also doing now because all the boards, they've got like, hey, we've got three M.2 slots on this. They're, they're taking the M.2 slots and they're putting it, you know, they're low on the board and they're like in the, in the lower right quadrant. And then they cover it up with the heat sink. And that's this part that's molded as part of the actual motherboard, you know, plastic cover. So you're like, uh, I got to pull that too, just to get the M.2 drive out of it. And then the thing that other, the other thing that really does suck about M.2, Elena can protect, it's like that little screwdriver, that little screw, right? And you're like trying to put that in and then it falls. Magnetized <laughs> screwdriver, man. Yeah, but that's How just How do you like, live without it? And a U.2 drive, you're just like, it's just like a regular, you know, normal external storage that we're used to. We're not external, but internal, right? So I, I would prefer U.2 over M.2. There's also power issues with M.2. I forget what it is like. I think it's, God, I don't remember, 18 watts, 20 watts. You really can't pump that much power through M.2. U.2, you can use a lot more power. So U.2 is the future. So The future. You heard, heard Actually, it here first. The future is PCIe. <laughs> directly into the, the, the slot is probably the, the, the highest performance, but. U.2 makes a lot of more sense. All right. Uh, we got a good uh, question from Fabulous. Uh, will the KB Lake 4-core 8-thread have better thermal performance than 7700K, assuming both are delitted with liquid metal? I don't know. I mean, it's so one thing, as I've heard conflicting information, I heard out of Computex some people saying that all they did was shut off the IGP, permanently shut off, you know, fuse off the IGP on the, on the big, you know, um, Core X version, but I also was told by a vendor, and I think, God, I thought Intel said it too, but they actually had basically eliminated the IGP. So because there's no IGP, 
they don't have to worry about, oh my God, you know, this spec says this. What if they run? What if they actually turn on the IGP? It's so much power. Uh, th in theory, um, KB Lake X versus KB Lake K should overclock better, assuming they're both deleted. Um, and, you know, in fact, the, the mm -hmm. overclocking record for KB Lake X or KB Lake period was set at Computex on a KB Lake X part. So I'm going to guess it's going to be better because why the hell go through all that work to make it absolutely no better than KB Lake K, but that is entirely possible too. So that really I've never deleted a chip and I'm never going to. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing too is I've heard conflicting information. I've heard from vendors that have deleted um, Skylake X parts and it was soldered. And then, of course, you know, uh, other people, I think uh, Gamers Nexus, they did it and it was a, a thermal paste, you thermal. know, thermal interface material, which I don't think is a proper, to me, like thermal interface material is the material that gets you from the die to the heat spreader. So that's solder too, right? So the interface material, you're interfacing with it, but maybe that's just because we're kind of word nerds. But um, <laughs> yeah, versus paste versus solder, I, I've heard conflicting information. I got to go with what I've been seeing publicly, which is it is just just cheap ass paste that Intel is putting under their thousand dollar CPUs. So yeah, bummer. Any more questions out of? Uh, uh no, nothing, nothing of note. I mean, people asking about more Xbox One X stuff, but yeah, uh, that's you know, we're not really. About. That's not really our. Yeah, just. <laughs> Get a PC, build it. Get a PC. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my advice. Of course, that, everybody knows my bias. So, all right, let's <laughs> let's wrap it up before uh, for, before Brad uh, melts in yeah, the sun. He's getting yeah in the sun. Yeah, it looks hotter than hell in there, Brad. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take us out. Uh, anybody got any last words? Nope. Okay, thank you for joining us. Check back in two weeks for your fix of PC talk on the Full Nerd. For audio listeners, subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. Send questions and comments, please do. If you're an older person like me who still uses email at the full nerd at PCWorld.com. <laughs> yes, the full nerd at PCWorld.com. That's not perfect. At the PC World. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I'm Gordon Ung with Brad Charkas. Adios. Elaine E. Bye, everyone. And Adam Patrick Murray will take us out. Uh, and be sure to tweet Morphing Ball with all your Xbox One X questions. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> hmm.